okay this lighting's kind of a nightmare but we're gonna have to deal with it because i can't sort it out so hey guys what's going on welcome back to my channel today i'm uploading for the first time in like three or four weeks i was doing so well i was doing so well and then like all of our trips have been cancelled because of corona like school work's been mad so honestly it's just been a bit of a hectic time um but anyway i'm back and this lighting's actually really bothering me so i'm gonna try and fix it but i don't really know how right okay so i think that's the best we're gonna get um but anyway i thought that i would hop on and show you guys how i chose my art theme so it's still under construction i haven't completely chosen it yet but this video i can't like i've never seen anywhere so i thought it might be kind of helpful for people i mean i don't think you choose your own theme at gcse i think you choose from a list but when you get to a level you have to choose your own theme like you can do anything so it's kind of it's a bit of a stressful time if you're anything like me i was a hundred percent set on wanting to do portraits and form because that was just like what I did that's what I was good at but I couldn't paint portraits so when it came to actually cho choose choosing choosing my theme I decided to go with something a little bit different and I wanted to try surfaces and texture so I went through all the steps for surfaces and texture was ready to start it and then decided that I wanted to change it again so it's been under construction for a bit but I thought I would share with you guys to the best of my knowledge how to try and narrow down your ideas and actually pick a theme in the end. So something that I do want to say really quickly is that you don't have to know what your theme is before you go into the project, which mine isn't clear yet. I think I'm at the moment, I'm out of breath. I speak too quickly and I get out of breath. <laughs> um, at the moment it's like portraits and expression but it could change it could change to identity like we're not really sure where it's going yet but the best thing to do is to just start it and then work through it and see what happens so the first thing that i did was assess my strengths so basically i looked at my gcse work previous work that i had done and decided which were my favorite to create and which one would which ones were the best so playing to your strengths and deciding to do a topic surrounding like the thing you're best at is obviously a really good idea because it's going to get you better marks like there's no like cap to it like that's how it works like you get better marks for better quality but at the same time you're going to be putting a lot of a lot of lot of effort into this so you want to pick something that you're going to enjoy so looking at the pieces that you enjoy creating the most is going to be really helpful as well don't just pick something that you're good at because you're good at it like most of the time what you're good at is what you enjoy anyway but make sure you pick something that you're good at and that you enjoy right okay so the next thing that i do is look for inspiration so the first way i do this is by looking on youtube so if you go on youtube there are loads and loads of sketchbook tour videos i think i mentioned this in my other art video but if you have a look and type in a level art theme or a level art sketchbook it comes up with loads and loads and loads and loads and this is a really snapchat <laughs> this is a really good idea to look at like as many different ones as you can because it gives you ideas for topic titles but it also gives you different ideas for different artists that you can do different ways that you can present your work or like different things like that and it's really 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 helpful so first i do that and then i had a look on pinterest and i decided to save a load of pins i searched the same thing so a level art sketchbook a level art a level painting things like that and I created a couple of boards and I just screenshot these and printed them off so I'll try and show you there there you go so these are really good you'll see that most of mine are portraits or like architecture type pieces so I'm not doing anything related to architecture because I haven't done any architecture pieces of work before so it just really wouldn't be my strength and for me to develop a whole new skill in terms of architecture would probably take me too long and I decided that it wasn't worth it I was better off doing portraiture and things like that so those are a really good idea do as many different Pinterest boards as you can um, because it really gives you like inspiration and when you're not really sure what to do like it gives you ideas for different medias to use things like that and it often gives you different ideas to what your teacher has as well because I find my teachers not slagging them off <laughs> my teachers um, know 
how they want it done by the terms of other students work so they know they have sort of set in their mind the work of other artists that they've explored things like that like they might not not necessarily have the time to go through and look at loads of new modern work and things like that that are on pinterest and that other people and smaller artists have done so looking at doing those different looking at loads and loads of different artists even if they're not big is really good and good for inspiration so do that. Okay, so the third thing that I then do is look at my Pinterest boards as well as the strengths that I looked at earlier and see if there's a pattern. So for me, it was very heavily related around portraiture, hence I chose to do portraits in some form. And then I create a couple mind maps. So this is the first one that I did. So these are loads and loads of different topic ideas. I'll try and scan this in and include it down below or you can just pause and read them. There's just really quick please ignore all the flipping and everything that's going on in the video i'm sorry it's just so that you can read what's on the sheet and i honestly hate the way that i look the other way around so so vain i know but there's loads and loads of different topic ideas on here so i've got like experimental mechanics expression manipulation color movement distortion time puzzled architecture loads and loads and loads of different titles so it might not necessarily relate to the two that i've seen most of them do like i've got contrast fractured wrapped so say for wrapped it sounds like it has nothing to do with portraiture but you could like wrap people's face in clean film string loads of different things like that so honestly my maps help so much the second my map that i then did was this one you can do this like at any point in your topic you don't really have to do that during the selection process but i want to include it while i've mentioned the other one so this one is also really helpful so this has got things to remember different medias that i can use different surfaces that i can paint on and then um exploration so things to remember to include in um analyses things to do so I want to try and explain my work a bit better within my A-level because I didn't do it so well in my GCSE. So I've got things like uh, timeline influence, so I can do like a timeline of artists in my sketchbook, I can talk about the influence on each of my pieces and basically it helps me just remember to include certain bits when I'm laying out my work. So that's really helpful. Okay, so by this point I've got a general idea of the topic that I want to explore, so portraiture, nature, mechanics, um, that kind of thing, like the general genre of what you want to do. So then I start looking at artists that whose work is based around that topic so i've looked at ooh, these are just three of them i think i've done 10 in total so frida Kahlo. so i've just written a little bit about her and her inspiration and what her work includes things like that and then included loads of pictures so a good thing to do when you're doing these that's so loud when you're doing these boards is to make sure that you include artists from like loads of like across the whole of time if that makes sense so that you've got different like forms of it i don't know if that makes any sense uh chuck close he's my favorite artist which is not a secret to anybody <laughs> and uh jenny savile i did so i've done loads of these boards but these are just three of them that i thought were cutest so i look at them and then i kind of look again at my topic but that helps me do so you have to do analyses things like that for your topic so when you're analyzing them you might come across new ideas and things that you can put into your work to make it a little bit more interesting okay so looking at these artists also helps narrow your title down a little bit so if i for example looked at okay so if i chose to look at jenny savile and focus on her work obviously you've got to do loads of different artists but if i chose to have a look at her work she does sort of deformity because she focuses on painting the bodies of dead people which is really morbid and kind of weird in my opinion but you do you you do you um so you could do like deformities or distortion that kind of thing or afterlife like it gives you loads of ideas for like how to narrow down your topic so that's also helpful for that right okay so after you've looked at loads of different artists we began doing artist copies so i've done one by jonathan yeo which is from his kyra series i did that that was one of the first a3 port no that was the first a3 portrait 
I think that I've ever painted so that was interesting to do I really like background um, but that kind of gave me the idea of expression because you can do expression through paint expression through media how different like ethnicities how that affects art how there's honestly there's so many different things I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute um, in terms of my thought process but then I've done Van Gogh as well just a copy of one of his pieces of work um, that again expression through paint because of the way he paints so then again like I can contrast the two artists and say like which one's more effective which one is better for a wider audience which one's better for a younger audience contemporary audience that kind of thing and then after that we've gone on to do our own portraits so I know I'm not sure whether my girlfriend will mind me showing you this but I know my guy won't uh, my guy, my, not my guy, but my guy friend. Um, okay, so this was the second one that I did. Oh my god, that looks so bad on camera. <laughs> For some reason, my artwork looks terrible on camera. I don't know why, but this was one of the paintings I've done. And then I've done one of my friend, my other friend. So they look terrible. They're not actually that bad in real life. They just look terrible on camera, I promise you. Um, so yeah, so doing loads of different pieces of work will help you narrow it down like through time and through the process of your coursework. So you don't really need a set title straight away. But what I would say is when you first come to start, choose a really broad topic. So I chose portraiture. I've said that about a hundred times in this video. But like I chose portraiture and now that I've began painting and began taking photos and things like that I have to like I've kind of decided that I might want to analyze the way like different paints different medias affect art or affect the influence of art and the impact of art and how different skin tones can alter the feel of the image how different like ways of stroking the brush what is a different um oh my gosh I can't how different ways of applying the media can affect the influence of the art things like that so that's literally just come through doing loads more pieces and that kind of thing and how the size of images can affect it as well so mine's very much based around how the actual artwork itself how it's created influences the impact if that makes sense i know my friend who is doing the course with me there's two of us in our course it's it's mad honestly i wouldn't it's it's mad um, <laughs> my the other girl doing my course is doing feminism and i can't, I can't tell exactly i think she's doing feminism and how gender uh, how genders portray through art over time I think that's the kind of thing she's doing so there's loads and loads and loads and loads of different topics that you can do you can do ones with more meaning like hers or you can do ones that are a bit more broad like mine yeah but that is pretty much it that's all my tips obviously I can't help loads because I'm still going under <laughs> my topic is still under construction and I'm still currently going through the A-level course so when I finish it my tips might be a little bit better but I hope that this helps some of you guys out because I have not seen a video like this anywhere on the internet before so I hope this is kind of helpful um if you did enjoy please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and all that and yeah I'll see you whenever I manage to make another video <laughs> ciao